All right, I want to talk about gold here. We saw uh, we see some heavy selling in gold today, and we have some gold positions on. I know some of you have some gold positions on. I have some gold positions on. Now, uh, first of all, before I go into anything about the market fundamentally, I want to say if you have positions on, mental game. You have to apply mental game, all right? But really what I want to talk about right now is what is happening in gold. The selling that you see in gold today is the same sort of selling, the same sort of irrational behavior that we saw by traders and investors in the stock market leading up to and during the night of the election. That is, um, they projected some kind of false outcome on a Trump victory. Uh, they got themselves uh, overly uh, frightened by just the election itself and kind of, you know, the jockeying back and forth in the polls and the poll numbers and, and stuff like that. They bought into the false narrative of, you know, something terrible is going to happen and there was going to be some kind of a Trump effect, which would be terrible. The night of the election, and I spoke about this the other day, when we had uh, Trump just starting to inch up. I'm talking about, I was watching it. I was watching it simultaneously, the market with the election returns. And as Trump started to tick up, even by a tenth of a percentage point in certain states, you saw the market roll over and take a nosedive and the Dow drop 800 points. Okay, now look at where it is. So the selling you are seeing in gold is based on the same type of highly unstable, emotional, irrational. I mean, there's a million adjectives I, I can use here, but they're all they all describe bad behavior. All right. The fact of the matter is, number one, even setting aside the Trump victory and what that portends in terms of economic policy. Um, gold's fundamentals were bullish. Okay, we had rising economic activity. Don't forget gold is uh, somewhat of an industrial metal. It's used in jewelry fabrication, a growing economy that feeds through into higher gold demand. Uh, we saw the fiscal flows as supportive. They are rising uh, this year already in fiscal year 2017. Last year was the second highest um, rate of government spend or the second highest magnitude of government spending that we have seen uh, and this year was already rising so that all that stuff was without the uh, election results now you throw in the ele election results what is he proposing he's proposing a big infrastructure rebuilding stimulus which i think he's going to do you know trump is a builder that's what he does you're not you know he's the president of the united states now this guy loves to build now he's a president he can do whatever he wants to do you are not going to hold him back from doing some kind of an infrastructure rebuilding he's going to cut taxes he's going to spend more on the military so you are going to have this at least this three prong and however they try to offset it with certain cuts in other areas of the budget you know it, it's all going to be smoke and mirrors because they'll they'll figure out a way to score it quote unquote you know the congressional budget office will score it so hey that's no bad not bad over a 10 year period it'll bring in this amount of revenues you know this is the supply side Arthur Laffer kind of stuff that they're going to go for it's going to it's going to result in much higher levels of deficits and deficit spending. So it's inflationary, not to mention the fact that the Fed is going to be raising interest rates. That's happening, okay? I mean, you look at what's going on with the stock market rally, and you look at some industrial metals. Look at copper. Copper is experiencing a 35-year, the strongest rally in 35 years. So the rate hikes will flow through into higher uh, income higher consumption, you, you've got the whole cocktail coming together. So whoever is selling gold here today, this is, and I'm, believe me, anyone who knows me, and if you've listened to my videos, I am not a gold bug by any means. I hate gold. I've said that over and over again. I don't consider it as money. I don't even consider it as an investment, but I'm a trader. I got myself into gold. I'm in it now. You know, I don't, I'm not a stop loser. Uh, I'm fine on my position, 
If the market requires that I sit and wait it out, I'll sit and wait it out. Very simple. The fundamentals, you must stay on the side of the fundamentals, and the fundamentals are for higher gold prices. And that's not, you know, because the, 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 it's the end of the dollar, or this is the new currency, or hyperinflation, none of that stuff. Just from a purely fundamental point of view. Now, if you don't have gold positions on, because I know some of you, an MMT trader and myself, we have gold positions on. If you do not have gold positions on, today is not a bad day to jump in. Okay, I, I am not adding anything to the position today. I am just saying whatever what is that, what is happening here now with this big sell-off is hysteria. It is somebody pushing the panic button. Um, it, it, it is... Uh, you know, an irrational sell-off, uh, and um, it will not be sustained, okay? We still might have a couple of days of turbulence here. This is a Friday. It's going to end up weak. You know, we'll probably open lower on Sunday night, maybe some more flushing out on Monday. That's the other thing. I want to see tonight when the uh, CFTC releases the Commitment of Traders report what the open interest, how much of a... Um, uh, long liquidation occurred, all right? And unfortunately, the data is only through, it'll only run through Tuesday, which was, what, today's the 11th, uh, yesterday was the 10th, so the 8th, yeah. Uh, but I could kind of figure it out by looking at the, um, not the breakdown in open interest, but just the total open interest uh, uh, when I see Friday. Anyway, that's what's going on. Use this as an opportunity to, to work on your mental game. Do not panic. Stay calm. I have gotten everybody through every situation. Okay? We pay with time, not with money. Losers pay with money. And if you pay with money, that means you do not want to win. I mean, some might pay with money and, and eke out wins. I don't know. Uh, if you lose, it's probably because that's your motivation. You might not realize it. Like nobody says, nobody goes into the game saying, I want to lose. But if you lose, and if you lose consistently, that is probably deep down subconsciously your motivation. You have to isolate that. And then you have to do the things you need to do to win. If that means sitting. I had a guy just uh, email me. He said, I had to sit for six months with TBT. But now he's making a lot of money. TBT being the short treasury ETF. So he had to sit. So what? So you got to sit. So what? What's so terrible about that? If you find that terrible, well, voila, you just, uh, you just found out what your true motivation is. Your true motivation is action, action. You want action. You can't sit. You're hyper. All right, go take a meditation course or something like that. What can I tell you? Sometimes you got to sit. Remember in that book, Jesse Livermore's book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, he said, you know, I made my money sitting. <laughs> Go read that book. Bye.